Hi, I'm Scott Hull. I'm the publisher of Part-Time Audiophile. Today's topic is, why do audiophiles love terrible music? This is not true, but it's this thing that gets kicked around when you uh, talk to audiophiles, you, you listen to audio reviewers, uh, you've uh, listened to audiophiles or audio reviewers who have been to an audio show. And you have this, this uh, filtered uh, kind of experience where someone will make some snarky comment about the music, uh, the quality of the music, or lack thereof, of something they heard other audiophiles talking about or playing or, or something, right? You go to an audio show and you hear uh, music that is, is cliched, is boring, is something they've heard a million times. Um, you get it referred to as, you know, uh, female vocals or uh, dynamic response or large scale classical or intimate uh, uh, something, whatever. And therefore, because they, they don't actually talk about, you know, the, the pieces of music, they're talking about the character, maybe the characteristics of certain types of music. Uh, that audiophiles are somehow removed from it, that they don't like it, that they don't know about it, that they're not interested in it. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I think this is, this is silly, right? It's like getting, getting stuck behind uh, the truth of the matter and, and trying to, to showcase uh, the truth about the matter. There is something when you're selling that what you're trying to do is uh, not necessarily be as transparent as maybe you would if it was just a conversation between friends. You get this, this uh, environment and my goal as a salesperson or as a demo uh, setup person is to convince you that what you're listening to is worth your time, your interest, your money. Uh, so what I may do as an audio show setup person, as a demo person, is come up with a set of songs that I know will, one, sound good, two, uh, showcase what I want showcased. Uh, and I mean by that is highlight the good and maybe uh, uh, not highlight the bad or the not good or the not as good, whatever. And pieces that I can speak to in ways that are interesting, that are evocative, that are meaningful, to get you engaged, to get you involved in the story uh, that I'm trying to create, this thing I'm trying to invite you into, this, this space where you can see value and maybe cough up some cash. So that's, that's on the one side, right? That's, that is why music at audio shows tends to be uh, uh, repetitive, it tends to be limited and tends to be uh, not terribly uh, avant-garde, right? Because that last bit, it, it's not about novelty here, right? I'm not selling you music. I'm selling you a pair of speakers, right? I'm selling you an amplifier. What I want you to experience is the gear through the music, which is almost directly inverted from what I think that the audiophile experience is really about is uh, experiencing uh, the music through the gear. I want you to uh, kind of imagine, if you will, what it would be like if you were a salesperson and what happened uh, on, you know, at any given interaction and you've got say a, a 500 of these ac across the course of a weekend, you've got those interactions and every interaction uh, was driven by uh, somebody bringing you something different to play. So far, so good. Now, imagine, if you will, that some of that is really well-recorded stuff, something that's very, very uh, transparent, something that's uh, constructed in a way to really highlight the characteristics of the audio system you're selling, one side. And on the other side, you have a uh, CD of vinyl rips that may sound like trash, highly compressed, uh, 
uh, popularized nonsense, uh, uh, broken washing machine uh, sounds, right? Not real music. And every one of those interactions, those 500 across the weekend, those interactions are happening kind of simultaneously. So you've got people in the room that want to listen to this and that, or this or that, uh, and you have to then play to them uh, something that you know is horrible or going to sound horrible, or when you start playing it, sounds horrible. And while that's very fun and funny to the person playing the music, if my job is selling stuff at that experience, make, making experiences that create selling opportunities, this is a... Uh, uh, counterproductive for lack of a better description. So anyway, that's why you don't hear a lot of variety at an audio show. It's controlled, it's been uh, curated, it's designed to, uh, to do something. So when you have a demo person willing to play your uh, random piece of music that you think is the, the cat's meow, and you get that kind of uh, weird look first, that's why, right? So the fact that they're able and willing to play it at all, that's a gift. And you should be happy to receive that gift. Uh, now, getting back to audiophiles loving terrible music. <clears throat> There's this, uh, I, I guess you could call it a, a, a meme, but maybe it's like a poll. Someone did the greatest albums of all time. If you ask uh, the average person this, uh, like uh, say my wife, for example, uh, who's a musician, she might say something like the Beatles White Album, right? But if you ask an audiophile, what you're gonna get is something like maybe uh, Jazz at the Pawn Shop or Dark Side of the Moon. And it invites you to wonder what is it about those albums that is really amazing or uh, what is it about that person that makes you look at them kind of funny. Are they doing something different? Have they gone off the deep end? Is there something psychologically or physically wrong with audiophiles that they no longer are in touch with good music? There's nothing wrong with those albums. Jazz at the Pawn Shop is, is, is fine music. Dark Side of the Moon, you know, I spent way too many hours listening to that on, on auto repeat. I get it, right? It's fine. But there's a, an entire world of music out there. I mean, clearly, uh, Boston's 1976 self-titled release is the best album of all time, and I invite you to fight me. But the assumption that uh, there's something wrong with this is, is a little odd, right? There's something wrong with the idea someone says Dark Side of the Moon is, is the best album of all time. Right? Why would you think that? Maybe they actually believe that, maybe. But there's also underneath it, there's this thing that there, people are doing in high-end audio. And again, that's worth talking about too. It's that we're listening differently when we have a hi-fi system. We're not just turning the music on and dancing. Uh, Though that's pretty awesome, right? Uh, pop on a David Bowie song and, and mayhem is likely to uh, erupt at my house. But the, uh, sometimes uh, you, you, you hear something and, and maybe it's more meditative. There's something in that music that kind of causes you to stop, causes you to pay attention, causes you to forget your busy life, right? Causes you to, uh, to appreciate it. And maybe it's the performance of that, of that, um, experience that song, that album you're playing. Maybe it's the, the performance, the quality of the performance, and maybe it's the sonics. Maybe in your system, that particular album is just uh, Looney Tunes. It's, it's got ping pong kind of stereophonics. It's dragging your head and your eyes all over the soundstage as the, as the sounds cascade around you. That's not invalid. It's also not invalid to say that a, a live Bob Dylan album uh, is uh, uh, something amazing to experience, even though the Sonics may be terrible, like a Grateful Dead album, Sonics may be t terrible, but the experience of it may be transformative. So are you coming to, to it for the Sonics? Are you listening to the music because uh, it sounds good? Or are you listening to it because it moves you, because it speaks to you? I don't think there's a right or wrong answer, though there 
if you listen to, to folks on high-end audio forums, or more importantly, to high-end audio reviewers, you do get this uh, kind of yes or no binary. It's one or the other, right? Are you, have you changed your musical tastes because your stereo no longer does what it is that you want it? to do or doesn't really play the music that you like to to hear right and i mean that in the sense of like uh the 1980s uh hair bands right they they sound terrible just they, they sounded terrible then but they sound terrible now and on a great audio system they sound even more terrible but they were fun weren't they so the question is are you has your has your audio system kept you from the experience of enjoyable music. I think that's uh, unfortunate if that is true, but that's not necessarily the same as saying that audiophiles don't love good music. They do love good music. It's kind of what's at least partially driving the hobby, right? This experience of music. It's not all that's driving the experience uh, and, or the hobby. And don't let any uh, audio writer tell you differently, right? If someone says they're a music first audiophile, call bullshit because it's not, right? You cannot be an audiophile and quote unquote, be all about the music. If it was all about the music, an iPod or iPhone now with some earbuds that came from Apple would have been done and done. You would have been fine, right? If it was all about the music, Spotify would be it played through your, through your phone. You don't need anything else. Uh, Spotify is the world's largest record library in existence. It's incredible the amount of stuff that you can find. If it's all about the music, you're done. So if you've got loudspeakers, it's clearly not all about the music, right? It's about the experience of the music. And that is a critical difference. It's kind of the entire hobby in a nutshell, the experience of the music and that experience can can vary are you uh experiencing new things with your audio system i hope so so when someone says to me you know hey i don't listen to the music i used to listen to i have one of two reactions one i can remember what the 60s and 70s and 80s uh music that i grew up that i love right uh sounds like when played through a reasonable system especially maybe even after some of the recent remasters it sounds it sounds horrible hard right it sounds not nearly as enjoyable not nearly as fun I have also, because of that, right, maybe uh, expanded what I enjoy. I maybe have started exploring new artists, uh, new, new singers, new performers, new styles, new genres. I want to say that if that is the case, awesome. Your audio system is a gateway to experience. And the more experiences, the more varied those experiences, the newer, the more exciting, in some cases, the older, uh, like I, I've gotten into 1950s, 1960s jazz, something I never would have done when I was 20 or 30 years old. But now uh, after my 40th birthday and a hi-fi system entered my life again, I, I have really loved, I love it now. It's fun. I've added to my repertoire. I will never not love uh, the Boston album, right? Or Crosby, Stills, and Nash. I will never not uh, get all excited about David Bowie or, or, oh heck, the Grand Funk Railroad, right? There's an enormous amount of really great music from that part of my childhood. But there's also stuff that I've never heard before and stuff that I still have yet to hear. It's one of the great things about uh, music platforms like Kobuz or Rune even, right? Systems that will uh, allow you to explore stuff that you've never, uh, never heard before. Pandora was uh, transformative for, for me a few years ago when it first came out. I loved listening to related things. And now uh, these services have only gotten significantly better and the sound quality is significantly better. And I think this is all good news. Anyway, getting back to that original topic, why do audiophiles love terrible music? This is stupid. This is a dumb question. And it's asked by 
really uh, obnoxious people with the sole point of being provocative for no point, except being smug, right? If your uh, definition of, of, of good music is, is new music, is uh, avant-garde, is uh, maybe equivalent to broken washing machine sounds, screw you, right? That's not music. It's just noises. And I think that's a perfectly legitimate response, right? If someone says that to you, just get lost. That's nonsense. You know nothing. And maybe go check it out. I think high-end audio lets you into doors that you would not normally have gone through. No one gets to arbitrate for you. No one gets to tell you what's uh, good or not good. It's, that's, it's up to you to decide that, right? This is not coming pre-packaged. It's not coming pre, uh, pre-chewed. Your job is to go out and find out for yourself. Uh, is 1950s jazz the pinnacle of, of bebop? Is bebop, hard bop, the, uh, the pinnacle of jazz? These are good conversations to have, but if you've never listened to it because all you've listened to is hair metal bands, then um, whatever, right? This, this is a non-starter. Wherever you start, if that's where you stop, I think you've done it wrong. The goal is not to uh, experience my, my cherished jewels uh, more, but to, to experience the, the wild unfolding of variety and life. Diversity in music is, as, as, is astonishing. It's as diverse as human beings are. And anything that brings you into that fuller experience by my book is a win. Yeah, so there. That's where I'm thinking about it. Um, I think you're welcome to argue with me in, in, in the comments. I'd love to hear more about what you, what you think about broken washing machine music and whether that's actually a valid musical uh, experience or uh, whether you think high-end audio shows really ought to do it different and take more risks by playing music that may not sound good or may drive more people from the room. Please feel free to go ahead and, and bring that to the table. I think that uh, music is a good conversation starter, uh, but it's certainly not going to be the end of the, the conversation. So anyway, Tell me what you think. Uh, feel free to subscribe to our, uh, our, our, mus our video series here, and we'll look forward to seeing more of you and hopefully seeing you, seeing more of us.